You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Liar. Ooh, after that big reveal, after that big reveal of what happened last week. Oh my God. <laughs> Ugh. The king is dead, and Lord Leuven is being blamed. So he has a vial is keeping him in a cell, very, very much for his own protection. So let's see what happens at this point, shall we? All right, guys, sit back and enjoy. I'm going to entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. All righty. <clears throat> Reality slowly drifts in front of my face in a similar way to how a ray of sunshine would, would cast a red glow on the inside of your eyelids. Every day, waking up becomes harder and harder. <sighs> Sometimes I can't even understand if this is a normal thing or if I'm just weak. I never was a morning person. Slowly, each of my five senses comes back to me. I immediately remember where I am and why I'm here. Usually when I wake up in a newer, unfamiliar, sp in a unf newer, unfamiliar place, I'm struck with a bit of confusion before realizing where I am. It's different this time, though. This isn't like waking up in another person's house after spending the night with them. This is different because the events that led to it haunted my dreams. I knew I was going to wake up to this. Images of Rainer's body slumped onto the floor with soulless eyes invade my mind, but I try not to think about any of what I, any of that yet as I'm not fully awake. I strain my eyes open wider and wipe the feeling of dried tears from my face. The stone bench that I'm lying down on is cold and smooth. Painfully, I sit up and look around. What I assumed to be a sack that I was laying that I was lying my head on was actually a pillow made from straw and a ragged cloth. There's a large tarp bundled up at the end of the bench, which I guess is supposed to be a blanket. I wasn't too cold last night, but I wish I had known that it was there. The cell wouldn't be too bad if the bed wasn't a giant slab of rock. I'm better off sleeping on the floor. The only window is a small hole busted into the wall that's, bar that's barred off. On the other side is a cell door that's locked with heavy chains. Along with that is straw laid over the floor and a few puddles of water. The shackles that I wore for a short time last night are laying there in a pile of straw. That's where they must have fallen after Lyle took them off of me. I get up from my sitting position and stand, stretching out my legs and arms. My clothes feel dusty and any skin I have exposed feels dry and dirty. My hair feels messy and I shake my head, letting it straighten itself before I haphazardly, try, haphazardly tying back again. I don't really care about it looking nice anymore. I'd rather just not have any hair in my eyes. I'd cut it, but I have a feeling Lyle likes it too much. Lyle. He said he would come back for me, but he didn't say when. And I think about it, why has anything happened yet? Shouldn't someone have come down to see me now? Good or bad intentions? Oh shit, unless he told everyone you escaped. I sat back down on the slab of stone. My mind seems to be all over the place. I can't decide what to think about. I try to distract myself with other issues, but my thoughts always wander back to the worst place. Justice. Interesting. Rainer is dead. They all think I did it. Except Lyle, of course. I'm honestly surprised he doesn't think it's me, though. The body was freshly killed and I was the only one there. If only I could function better under stress. I can't believe this. If I wanted to kill Rainer, I probably would have planned it so I'm not standing there like an idiot when it happens. Shock really took me over there, and I also got, got another one of those sudden headaches. If I get out of this, I need to get those checked out. Whatever they are caused by, it can't be good. Tapping my feet on the ground in front of me, I notice a chair that's been thrown against the wall. Its pieces are scattered all over the floor and look old and rotten. Who could have killed him? Several people come to mind, but when I think about it, I don't know what any of them are capable of. Nobody reasonable really comes to mind. There's one thing that I'm certain of, though. I was framed. Someone has it out for me, and I don't know who. I can sit here and rack my brain for hours, but I soon hear footsteps echoing down the damp hall. I don't get up from my seat until, until, until I really start to listen to the footsteps. They're extremely familiar. I jump up and run to the cell door. Lyle! He gets closer and soon I can see him down the bend of the hall. Leuven! He approaches the door to the cell. There's a look of worry on his face and I can tell he's been having a rough day. He probably has it worse than I do. I, limp, I limply reach my hand through one of the bars. He gets on his knees and takes it in his paw. I'm sorry, I should have come down sooner. I wasn't able to, though. Why not? His sad and tired eyes look up at mine and I can see the stress. The entire kingdom is in shambles. Rumors are already beginning to spread throughout the town and everyone thinks that you killed Raynor. 
It's only a matter of time before this spreads throughout the rest of the North. I figured that would happen. Has anything worse happened? No, but the worst is yet to come. Everyone is scared, confused, and furious. I and several others were up half the night with Liz trying to wrap our heads around it. Others? Yes. Anyone who was a witness and several other officials. The prince joined us halfway through. How is he taking it? Not well. The bell started ringing and he locked himself in his room after finding out. He didn't even want to see the body, but to be honest, I wouldn't want to see it either if I were him. One of the guards told me that he could hear sobbing and things being thrown around the room. Oh god. He probably thinks I did it. I wouldn't blame him, but I really don't need more reasons for him to hate me right now. He joined us about an hour later. Not before kicking over your chair, of course. I can imagine that. Well, he can honestly be forgiven for losing his temper. Agreed. He had enough stability to contribute to our little debate last night, however. What has been discussed so far? He sits down in front of the cell door and leans his head back against the wall. I do the same, finding a nice pile of straw to sit down on. Well, mostly trying to figure out what we're going to do next. Laying our, kingdom to re laying our king to rest was one of the topics. It should be taken care of soon. I still can't believe he's dead. Neither can I. He wanted to be buried next to his wife. Behind the gardens? Yeah. How did you know where she's buried? I was taking a walk through the gardens after we visited the village when I happened upon the grave. Rainer was there and we talked for a bit. You came back to my room drunk that you came back to my room drunk that night, so I didn't tell you so I didn't get to tell you. Yeah. He was paying his respects and I caught him in a bit of a vulnerable moment. After that we just talked for a bit. He went he went there every month. Right now they're already making the arrangements to have him buried there. The biggest topic was what this means. Some see this as an act of war, but I doubt that. I feel there's something far more sinister at play. I feel the same way. Given the exchange of ambassadors was proposed by the Kingdom of Aaron, Prince Adrius thinks you were here. You were sent to cause chaos and weaken liar. That's ridiculous! Aaron would never dream of starting conflict between the kingdoms. Why would they want to war with Lyre and Driss? That's not what they're thinking. A majority of people see this as an attack on Lyre from both kingdoms. What? They have reasons to suspect that Driss is a part of this plot. The kingdom of Lyre has been becoming more and more isolated over the years. Trade has been slowing down and they have, been, they have suspicions that Aaron and Driss are trying to seize control to benefit themselves. At least that's what I heard. I'm not a politician. This doesn't make any sense. Seize control? Improving relations between the kingdoms is the desirable outcome, simply due to the fact that all the kingdoms would benefit equally. Starting a conflict, let alone a full-on war, would be detrimental to the entirety of Tigran. No. I don't think that's what's happening. Neither do I. It just doesn't make any sense. Either way, even though Lord Kadaj was appointed Minister of Foreign Relations, Prince Adrius considers him a political hostage. Nothing too serious has been decided yet, considering Dress is only under suspicion of collusion. I assure you, I haven't been scheming with Kadaj. I know. Trust me, Leuven. I believe you. I can't help but remember the conversation that Kadaj and I had the other day. The fear that Lyre is falling out of touch with the rest of the kingdoms. So it's true. The kingdoms do fear that Lyre is falling out of touch. Even some of the citizens of Lyre feel this, feel this way. But he said his goal was to bring stability. So he couldn't have had a hand in this. Could he? I don't remember seeing him before I left the party last night. Thankfully, Liz somewhat agrees with me. Really? Yes. She also believes that there's something far more complex going on here. The only bad part is she's still conflicted on whether she thinks you're the one who did it or not. It makes sense. She doesn't really know me. And anything she does know would definitely be confusing. I tried to convince all of them that you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That you were framed. What did they think of that? Liz seems to consider it as a possibility. Prince Adrius is currently blinded by hatred, but in the near future I can see him considering it as well. <sighs> I doubt that. It's nice to hear him it's nice to hear I'm not as completely guilty yet. Each moment we continue to talk about this, and every second I learn what's happening, I get more and more stressed. There's another thing. He sits up a bit and leans toward the cell door. You have a lot more information considering the scene of the murder. That's what I've been doing most of the time. Was there anything that could prove my innocence? Nothing yet. But there has been some very helpful insight. Like what? Well, the first thing, well, first thing, there's the body. He was stabbed twice in the stomach, once in the chest, and then most likely had his throat slit to finish the job. 
Rayner was most likely caught off guard. His antlers tore through the drapes after getting caught in a struggle. He found flakes of gold stuck on the cloth next to the rips. They're from the antler that, that he decorated for the ball. I feel my insides twist around a bit as I recall the image of the room. Yes, that's interesting, but there are there any important revelations? Yes, there is. The guards confirmed to us the people who had been in the room around the time before his death. Who else was there? The guards posted outside of the staircase that leads up to the tower to his room confirmed that four people had been in there around that time. One of the guards, Bjorn. Lord Kadaj, you, and of course, Raynor. With Bjorn going in and out within the hour. I knew it. What? Kadaj wasn't at the party when he left, was it? When we left, was he? I don't remember seeing him. I think he and Raynor must have slipped out early. Maybe to take care of something similar to what he had in mind with me. That is most likely what happened. We questioned him a little last night, and he said he was handling some important businesses business with Rayner. Official questioning hasn't begun yet, but maybe he knows what happened. Or maybe... He leans forward in interest. What? Maybe he had a hand in it. His eyes gleam with shock at first, but I see his thoughts and watch as he considers the possibility as if he's already done it before. Even I, even I have to admit, it's not something I would want to believe, but given the things he said in the past, it's not far off. He alluded to events going in an undesirable direction after the winter solstice. Lyle speaks up. It's not impossible. Bjorn is currently giving his full report to Liz, so we'll find out soon, I guess. But yes, it's completely possible for him to have done it. Do you think he did it? Like Lyle said, it's possible, but I don't want to believe it. Bjorn could have done it too. Are we sure no one else was in there that night? Positive. Not only do we have Bjorn's brief report, but several canines, including myself, um, sniffed the room. Oh yeah, that would be helpful. I forgot you could do that. It's funny to imagine Lyle with his nose pressed to the ground, sniffing like a bloodhound. I doubt that's how he did it, though. You yes. And we only picked up the scent of four people. Those are the people who were noted. Damn. That goes my hopes of it being someone else. It was a long silence before I finally answered his question from before. You asked if I think it's him. The thing is, I don't want it to be. But it definitely could be. I agree. But I thought you didn't trust him. Or at the very least didn't like him. He slumps down lower in his sitting position. I didn't trust him because I saw him as a man with a motive. Someone who wanted to climb the ranks. But I never would have imagined he would do something like this. He pinches a part of his muzzle between his eyes and runs a paw over his head. I too want to believe that it wasn't him, but only because it would mean Driss has nothing to do with this. He lowers his paws and looks at the floor. That would leave Bjorn. If it was him, that would mean it's not a foreign attack, which would make this much more complicated. But I also don't think it could be him. He's always been a beast, but his devotion to this kingdom is unchallenged. I guess that makes sense. Still, it has to be one of them. Unless... What is it? Adrius. What if he... It's not out of the question, but it's extremely improbable. Especially with the evidence we have so far. What if it was... Patricide? What? What are you saying? You know what patricide is, right? Of course I know what patricide is. You think Adrius killed his dad? I shrug my shoulders. It's not an impossibility. He wasn't in the room at the time, though. I know. He was out in the village last night. I saw him by the fountain. Lyle thinks for a moment. That explains why the exit to the tunnel was unlocked. But still, you said it yourself. He wasn't even there. You don't have to be in the same room as someone to have them killed. Even so, we don't know if he wasn't out there the whole night. We don't know if he was out there the whole night. What, would the mo what motive would he have? He says this in a hushed whisper, annoyance in his voice. Not everyone needs a motive, but his is easy to figure out. Leuven, I... He cuts himself off and thinks for a moment. Don't you think you're being a little biased? No! I mean, we have to consider all possibilities. He looks down at the ground and wrinkles his snout. I understand what you're saying. And I know you also don't like him. I know he doesn't like you, too. Hell, even I'm not particularly fond of him. Lately, they, lately they may have been a bit distant or short with each other due to stress, but you've only been here a month. You haven't seen their full relationship. He loved his father. And his father loved him. He bites his lip a bit, but continues. Last night, he was enraged. He was going through so many emotions, and they all felt genuine. And you know how I'm a good judge on these things. 
I know, I just thought I would throw it out there. I just had this feeling that it might be true. Why? I don't know for sure. He's been saying things to me recently. I have a feeling that he has it out for me. He curls his lip in response to this. And not too long ago, Kadaj gave me some advice. To trust my own judgment and rely on what I know. To put trust in other people, but never as much as I trust myself. Lal oh, runs a paw through his fur, listening intently. I can just feel it in my gut that he has something to do with this. His paw spurs up against his knees as he considers it. I don't know, Leuven. Maybe you're right, but we need to stop throwing around suspects. By that logic, we, we could suspect the damn servant that saw me practically half-naked last night. Maybe he killed the king and went to go and frame you. He excels and gathers himself. But that doesn't mean he was the one who did it. We have to focus on the solid suspects that we have for now. That's our best chance of proving your innocence. Suddenly a sharp pain shoots through my body straight up to my head. Shouldn't we be considering all of our options? My life depends on this! I shout, it, I shout this at him, the searing pain taking over. This upsets him, and once the pain is gone, I instantly regret it. I'm sorry, Lyle. I didn't mean to yell at you, I just... It's fine. I understand. I know this, I know this must be stressful for you. No, it's more than that. I'm just tired of talking about this. I just... I lay back on the floor and stare at the ceiling. Something's wrong with me. Like what? I'm not sure. Mainly it's these headaches I've been having, but it's something else, too. I feel like things are going so fast. Like I'm on a carriage going down a hill and there's no way to stop it. I pause to collect my thoughts, knowing I'm about to go on a very large rant. I've always tried to keep a level head. I was trained to become a master of my emotions. But sometimes I slip. Situations become too stressful and nothing prepares you for what happened last night. I froze. And it's been happening all the time. I get stressed out and I make impulsive decisions and do stupid things. I run my hands through my hair and squint my eyes, the pain still thumping in my head. Lyle, I'm just... I'm so scared. He shuffles on the ground a bit, then leans forward, a solemn look on his face. I know how you feel, Leuven. Believe me, I do. Sometimes we try to do our best to be prepared for anything. He looks down at his paw, opening and closing the fingers. But fear gets the better of us. Sometimes it can control us and influence our actions. He looks out the window to our left with a conflicted expression on his face. Leuven, do you know the reason why I blame myself for our queen's death? I... Why is he bringing this up? It's because he could have stopped it, right? Yes. He stares off into space for a moment before continuing. When I had my eye cut, I couldn't move. Blood was pouring into my eye, and I... I thought the worst had happened. Fear took over, and I froze up. He rubs his paw over his eye. My officer tried to shake me and get me... Officer tried to shake me and get me up, but I... I lost my footing. I wasn't in the moment. Everything happened so fast, and I was scared. His words echoed down the corridor. He looks up at me. That haunted me for a long time, Leuven. I even approached Rainer about it a few years ago because of the pain. I asked him, how could I have been brave in that situation? He gave me some advice. He said, you can't be brave unless you are afraid. Along with, otherwise you're just reckless, but that's beside the point. He gives a slight smile. And he's right. You have to stay brave. Fear can help with that. With that, he ends his speech. I guess I understand what you're saying. I aimlessly fiddle with the ring on my finger as I take it all in. I'll need to work on that. It's pretty good advice. He was full of good advice. Lyle well, says this with a sense of pride. You really admired him, didn't you? It was more than just your dedication as a knight. I did. Ever since I started living here, he was like my second father. I was practically raised by him in my teen years. Please tell me you've had time to grieve. Not really. I've had to focus on what's going on now. It's what he could it's what he could want me to do. He'd be very proud of you, Lyle. He gives a slight smile. I hope so. And I'm gonna make him even more proud. I'm gonna do everything in my power to get you out of here, love. Rainer may be dead, but I'm going to continue to follow through with the orders he gave me. I will assist you in any way I can. He stands and sticks a paw through the bars. I get up and take it in my own hand. I love you, Lyle. I love you too, Lubin. I just hope we're doing the right thing. You know, by being together. What do you mean? Well, it's just that... I love you, Lubin. But you said everything was moving too fast. If you want to slow down, we can. I run my hand over his paw, feeling the pads beneath the glove and running my fingers along his. Lyle, I wouldn't say this 
I wouldn't say this is from my experience, but I know one thing about this world. Love happens in all kinds of ways. Sometimes it's slow, other times it's fast. Sometimes it's between people who are similar, and sometimes it's between people who are very, very different. I say this as I run my hand across his cheek. You're very different from me. It's happening very fast, and it happened at a very chaotic time in our lives, but... This is the only fast thing in my life that I'm enjoying. You're my light in the dark. He leans forward, pressing his snout through the bars, and gives me a kiss on the forehead. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it there for right now. I gotta get ready for work. Got work in less than... I gotta, I gotta head out in less than 20 minutes. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of Liar. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and give a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!